Yo, what's going on? You are now tuned in to the Inside Rules Podcast, your home for entertainment, enlightenment, where we discuss and give our takes on what's going on in not only music, entertainment, general news, and everything pop culture. Make sure you subscribe, share. Let's get into it. Hey. Right off, right off, right. You know what I'm saying? It's a good day. How's everybody feeling today, man? Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. Man. Yeah. Very great. Man, we got a very, very special guest, man. You know, my dog. You know what I'm saying? Boy, got a, you know, we got a little impressive resume. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of resumes, you know what I'm saying? They, they call him the resume plug. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, my boy out here digitally trapping. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yo, a, mm-hmm. a Sigma man, you know, I had to represent today a Sigma man, you know what I'm saying, my OG, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Nigel Hammond, what's going on today, bro? Yo, what up, what up, what up, what's going on, fellas, man, I'm excited to be here, definitely excited to chop it up. Thank what's you, up? man. Glad to have you, man. Definitely yes. glad to have Thank you, Thank you man. for your time. Thank you for your time. Yeah, man, I know you've been a little busy, man. Um, For the people, man, just for the people, yeah. You know, shout your name out, you know, explain what you do and everything like that, just so they know, you know, get a little familiar with you. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. What's going on? Shout out to all the listeners tapping in worldwide. Uh, my name is Nigel Hammett, 25 years old, um, from Maryland, went to college in North Carolina. And what I do is a combination of a few things. Um, so they do call me the resume plug. I've had a resume writing business for the last five years, helping over 500 individuals get into jobs, break into tech, I get their LinkedIn cover letter, interview, et cetera, right? Um, I also am a digital educator. Um, I teach trading, I teach social media, I teach business. Um, and that goes with the landscape of one of my lifetime models, which is digital trapping. Um, so I have a, a business and team called Digital Trappers. Uh, really the concept of taking the hustle mentality, taking the street mentality into corporate, into the business world. So. You got the digital trapper lifestyle mixed with the resume plug. Um, and that's me, Nigel Hammond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely a beautiful thing, man. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to touch on all of that, man. Definitely we're going to touch on all of that. But I think it's very important, you know, for the people to really understand a little bit more just about you, where it all became, you know, all came from. So I like to call it like the humble beginnings, man. So mm-hmm. give us a little deep dive into Nigel, man. Like who was really Nigel before the resume plug, before yeah. the digital trapper? How did that all come about, man? Man, I really relate to my guy, uh, J. Cole. I feel like uh, most of my life I've always uh, been on the sidelines. Um, so it's, it's weird for people to see me uh, at this stage now. I'm somebody that, you know, speaks well, always going to be mm-hmm. in the front of the room leading. Um, but that wasn't always the case. I uh, really grew up super shy. Uh, on the sidelines, um, you know, never, and not a stranger to losing, not a stranger to rejection, not a stranger to just, you know, feeling like the smaller person. So I seen things from, again, a sideline perspective. Um, I had an interesting uh, childhood, an interesting uh, journey to adulthood. Um, so it's been great to kind of transition, actually being on the field and balling out. Um, compared to when I was younger, just kind of peeking and just watching what's going on. Feel that. Definitely feel that, man. It's always tough. You know, I know everybody in yeah. here can probably relate yeah. to just being on them yeah. sidelines. Oh, yeah, you know for what sure. I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. I definitely got a question. I'm, I'm curious what time period, or maybe even a specific moment, if you can remember that, where, when did you kind of just get tired and just say, enough's enough? I'm tired of sitting over here, man. Forget this. Put me in, coach. I'm tired of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, bro. Honestly, it really happened a few phases. The thing about life is it, it goes up, up and down. Um, so mm-hmm. some True. particular moments for me um, at a younger age, probably just later in high school, um, I kind of just had a foresight, a, a vision. And like, this could happen to a lot of people from all over, no matter you know how you grew up. But you kind of just see – what everybody else is doing and you like, damn, I just had a vision like, yo, if I stay on this particular path, I'm going to end up in a place where not necessarily that's, that's bad. Cause that's the reality for a lot of people. But I feel like God gave me some special gifts and abilities and I'd be a fool to put it to waste. So, you know, in particular, yeah. honestly, you know, I was having uh, a lot of troubles at home just to say the least, uh, a lot of uh, domestic issues was going on in my family. Um, and it made me realize the power of, you know, we have our own life. And you can't always be the subject to circumstances and environment. You ultimately have that decision to go ahead and choose and pick your own life. So that happened right, to yeah. me about 15, 16. Um, and then also I had some moments throughout college 
where I started, you know, practicing speaking better, started working on my brand to go ahead and elevate and separate again. Yeah. Yeah. It's powerful, man. It's, yeah, right. Powerful. I, I think it's I think it's really important that you, you know, you found a, a time and point in your life where you, you know what I'm saying, you you mustered up that that confidence, you know what I'm saying, to, to really yeah. be be better than 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 what you were at that at that moment. You know, it takes a lot. You got yeah. you got people that's out here that's in their forties, fifties, you know what I'm saying, that's still trying to find who they are, you know, and and they got kids and stuff like that. So I, I just think it's ain't really gonna find it at Amazon nigga. That, that you right. <laughs> yeah, I think I it's really it. important that you I find it at, at a young age. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I've done all of that. I've done everything under the sun, yeah. so we can talk about it. And the crazy thing is though, like you know, even though you have that ability to move forward. Because everybody in their own life has their own obstacles. One thing that I've learned now at this age is like, we got to make sure we're doing that in a healthy way. I feel like mm-hmm. because I had certain things going on, I just I was in survival mode. When you're in survival mode. You don't care about like you ain't got no oxygen. You trying to get that breath. It don't matter who you right. got to what you got to do. So as I got older, I started to evaluate kind of okay. I'm I'm lit. I'm getting my breath. I'm getting my air. But let me let me peep how I'm doing it to make sure I'm you know moving in a healthy way. Right. Yeah, killer that, killer, man. that kind of yeah. thing, it, it, like you said, that's a real big thing because a lot of people tend to be, especially young and understandably so, very short sighted. And yeah. it really, you got to, it takes a real introspective moment and a real humbling moment when you, like you just said, you were in survival mode. When you start realizing, hey, I've actually got enough here, I'm doing okay. Right. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm hustling still, but like, <laughs> I'm not hustling to stay above water anymore. Like, right. now what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That's and a weird. lot of people, they tend to, and kudos to you for not doing so, a lot of people tend to just be like, well, you know what? I was actually more comfortable doing that than this. I'm not really sure yeah. what to do, so I'm just going right. to go back to that. Facts. Facts. It'd be real hard, too, trying to stay um, out of content. You know what I mean? Like, once you get to mm-hmm. that level, too. And I think that's something that a lot of people, like when, like you said, like they get stuck at that point. Yeah, it's Self-imposed. just like... I'm here, so isn't this what it should be, or should there even be more? So it's like, but I see you as somebody that definitely, like, as you just described, you know, you recognize, okay, I'm here, but there's more to get. You know what I'm saying? I heard, like, Brady had said one time, he was like, um, when I get that championship, like, a lot of people will get it, and they be like, oh, that's it. They look at it. He was like, I looked at it, and then I said, oh, man, I want another one. Yeah. Like, buddy going to be lonely. <laughs> I need another one. So, yeah. like, how do you like just for the people out there? Like, how do you channel that? How you channel that inner hunger, even when your plate is still full? For sure, that's a great concept. I mean, we all have our original selves. Like, we all got our our selves that nobody sees behind closed doors. It could be weird, loud, shy, whatever the case may be. That's the organic version that you're gonna have to grow and develop. And so, the initial challenge, like you said, is once you break through that, then what happens next? For me, you know, some people look at it as a bad thing, but man, I've still had major setbacks even after getting to certain places of success. Mm -hmm. So you can get humbled in life. All right. That's one easy way to life will do that to you. So you got two options at that point. You can reinvent yourself from there or just kind of just woe is me. Talk about what you was doing five years ago. Uh, And then secondly, it's about your environment. Who are you hanging around? The biggest reason where I'm at today is I started changing my my circle and they say the five people that you hang around, you're going to become the six. So I really just challenge myself to get around people that I can get advice from, whether mentorship, whether homies doing great things. And although people say you can learn from people's mistakes and I've seen a lot of people's mistakes, I think it's even better to learn from people's wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel that. That's true. That's and tough, man. R- really, there's a lot of losses frankly that sometimes you just seeing it don't do this just don't do it justice ah, it. <laughs> just it's seeing damaging. it don't do it justice you gotta is it's really yeah and like you said that that's really yeah ex- that's real strong right there Barry because a lot of people tend to like I was saying before a lot of people tend to go backwards into what's real really comfortable right. and so really right. stepping your making yourself step out of your comfort zone is really I'm understanding a big key to this, and it's really about making out being uncomfortable comfortable. Oh yeah, I mean, you can get forced. I think the easiest thing to do when it comes to comfort zone, you got to put yourself in a situation or surround yourself with people that's going to force you to do it. Because mm. sometimes you don't have enough yeah. confidence. Like 
Like you be scared. Like being scared is real. But like it's like when you with your man's and you like scared to talk to that lady or for the ladies listening, you scared to say what's up to uh, that fella. Sometimes you need somebody to just push you yeah. and then boom, we hit it. We hit yeah. it. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. Ain't no turning back now. Ain't no turning back now. <laughs> I say, boy, stop dicking your feet in the ground, yo. Just get pushed. <laughs> Just get just pushed. go ahead out there, do what you got to do, and like you said, the, I I could say it before, self imposed pain. It's much harsher sounding than it actually is. It's really why let yourself get to a point of when there tend to be multiple rock bottoms. Yeah. What well, don't don't let yourself slip all the way on every single right. thing before you decide. Right. Okay, let me go ahead and get right. Because you keep doing that, even that becomes a habit. Like I was saying, once you get above water, you don't know what else to do. <laughs> you're looking at the land and you're like, I'm going to just dive back in and come right back up in a little oh, bit yeah. and see what I can do again. And it's really a sick loop. It's really a saddening loop. I think I think that's probably like, I mean, that's a common mistake when it comes to people who just let these, just like how you said you have, you know, you, you notice you saw you had a gift in yourself at a very young age. You know, I think a lot of people, the mistake a lot of people make is, you know, they might they might dwell on the past or just dwell on uh, making something comfortable for them, even though the situation that they need to do to prevail and to get to where they need to be is going to be uncomfortable. But yet they'll stay in that same, mm -hmm. you know, uncomfortable or comfortable situation and staying complacent and not, you know, saying not really progressing. But it's like, you know, you can't you can't expect things to work for you when you want them to you know what i'm saying sometimes you just really got to go True. out there and get it because the, the world is still gonna go on you know if, yeah. if you're not that's gonna go shit. get it somebody else gonna, gonna gonna make it you know what i'm saying yeah i think i think that's like the common common like misconception that that people can do and, and you know make mistakes of really that's, true like Definitely got to make sure you have that faith, man, too. I think that goes a lot of times, not to get too, like, spiritual or any other religious mm -hmm. or anything like that, but just, you don't even got to be faith in something, like, you know, anointed or whatever or above you, It'll but just faith, faith in, in what you, right, in yourself yeah. and just your abilities. I think a lot of times that's, you know, what stops a lot of people is, it's like, all right, so I want to be a comedian. All right, cool. I'm going to go to my first set or whatever. And, you know, I go to the first set. Ain't nobody really fucking with my jokes. They're not laughing or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I got a little chuckle from, you know, a little fat <laughs> nigga over here. You know, you think it's kind of funny, but that's just because, you know, that's just because he, he think everything funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's nobody just, really I mean, fucking with you're it. You're not supposed and to then you quit, like, though. Yeah, you go home like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't want to do this shit no more. Nobody thinks I'm yeah. funny. Uh, you know, whatever. I'm just going to go back to working at Burger King, whatever. You know, yeah. it is Whoppers on Tuesdays. You know, that's me. But if you got that confidence, like, all right, cool, like, or that faith, like, it's just one set, like, on to the next one. You know what I'm saying? How they say yeah. in sports, like, next play. You know what I mean? Right. You just having that mentality and everything like that. And um, it's just something that you really got to embody. So, you know, that's just – shout out to everybody out there, you know. I think, you know, you look at this podcast and you see, like, we're four people, you know, in our own ways that do something like that. And definitely embody that in your own life, you know. Have that faith and just have that confidence and, you know, channel it to any of you at the end of the day. No, to, to put yeah. a bow on that, really, a simple quote that I heard you'll never rise to your expectations, you'll only fall to your standards. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And another simple quote I heard, um, shout out to his brother Shaquille Sunflower. If the river flows, then so would a salmon, <laughs> and we're just gonna leave it right there, man. <laughs> All right. But Nigel, man, you know what I'm saying? You definitely talked about one thing that I did, I didn't want to highlight as well, too, man, in the humble beginnings is that um, you talked about going, like when you went, went away to college and everything. So, so for a lot of people, when you go away and you get away from home, that kind of like brings out like some things about you that you probably didn't, you know, you wouldn't have ever saw before because you're out of your comfort zone, you know, so to speak. Um, now, you, I know for those who don't know Nigel, you know, you went to North Carolina A&T. That's a very, very prestigious, you know, HBCU. So talk mm -hmm. about, like, your experience there. Like, how did going to HBCU, that one particularly, kind of bring those things out of you? What did you – what were you able to take from it and, and like, really learn? Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, just for context, you know, uh, I went to Edgewood in Maryland. So, you know – uh, mm. you know, was, man, they don't even know where that's yeah. at, man. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> they don't even I don't know where that's like, at. Man. You gotta put them on the map, man. What's up? I'm, saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, we trying, y'all. We trying. 
We look, trying, look. man. Edgewood, Maryland. <laughs> Remember that. Check this out. Check this out. So when it, wow. I, I'll never forget this, bro. Um, senior year, I'm telling everybody, look, man, I'm ready to go to uh, North Carolina a &T. Uh People looked at me in the cab. You know, I ain't going to disclose the name, but I'll never forget like yesterday. <laughs> it was like, yo, what? Why are you going to North Carolina? What's down there? <laughs> like, like, like a, a scavenger hunt or something. Like, like I'm, I'm, trying go, I'm trying to go to school. Um, a lot of people don't know, man. I actually uh played tennis my first year in college. Yeah. Um, and I learned how to play tennis a little later in my life, and it was good enough to play uh D1 in college, which was nice. But man, it was fun, bro. Like the South is different uh compared to the North. People are a little bit nicer, food. Uh, it's definitely hitting, uh, hitting on the seasoning. So mm -hmm. it, was, mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun uh. aspects. Uh, There's a lot of cultural things that I had to learn, um, but you know, they was they, they was definitely digging the kid. That, and I, I made a lot of friends, people from all over, um, and going yeah. to an all black school was great for me. You know, I ain't have to deal with like no racism. It, you know, not that I dealt with a lot, but you know, every black person they seen they fair share. So it's nice to put your guard right. down and just be chill. So when I went to right. ANT, I got busy speaking skills, the event planning. The confidence that really all kicked in once I was at school. I feel you, man. That's what's up, man. Um, you know, I can't relate. You know, I went to a PWI. Uh racism never made in my life. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's yo. cold as hell. It's cold as hell <laughs> yeah. in Rough Haven, yeah. yeah what a record. In Connecticut. It's it's cold cold as shit. You know what I'm saying? Um now and I was running track too, which was really I don't know how I came to that decision. Like, yeah, let me run outside where it's cold. I really don't know where I came to that decision, man. But yeah, it was terrible. Um, I definitely wish I went to a uh, you know a black institute, you know, HBCU, yeah. but um, that's cool, man. Cause you know, a lot of people, you know, really get like really miss out on what it means to just be surrounded by people just like you, and not even all the time like skin, like skin and everything, like just people that have like same backgrounds as you. You know what I mean? Like interests and things like that. Mm -hmm. So. That's why I really wanted to ask, like, you know, what did that do for you? Because generally, like, I'm I'm generally, like, you know, um, interested in myself just to know, like, dang, like, you know, did that make you think a different way about this? You know what I'm saying? And around that time, well, no, nah, let me stop. Because uh, were you were you still in school around the time when um, Trump was coming into office? Uh, Right. I graduated when that, that transition was happening. But, for example, mm -hmm. like, conversations like that in a traditional american place versus the all black place is going to be different i mean yeah the mm. thing is you may experience that as a kid like you may go to an all black school or like your camp is all yeah. black but tr most places there's not a lot of places in america where you can go and be surrounded by people that look like you and i'm gonna say this if they look like you it may not be um you know the best environment to to say the least so it's not a lot of places you can get the best of both worlds right right but, intelligent and they look like you so when you add those two together it's definitely a unique scene man but it's lit i mean anybody can pull up and honestly what we're doing right here is recreating that experience i mean all of us up here chopping it up yeah, having yeah. intelligent conversation so that's how i see it i, yeah, I wanted to ask you and javen a question since you're both part of the same fraternity what kind of experience and what did you gain from doing that because that's something that's a whole nother experience inside of college itself I feel you. Um, I'll let you go first, man. You want to go first? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely lit. Um, a lot of people see from a perception standpoint, oh, they got stepping, you know, they got, mm. you know, partying or it's, it's lit, it's social. And those things are true. I'm not going to sit here and downplay those things. Um, but outside of the obvious social things, I mean, it really pushed me from a professional standpoint. My first time really speaking in front of a bigger crowd was through the frat. My first time getting on the stage mm. is because they made me, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I ain't get forced, who knows where I would be at today. So um, it definitely, you know, gave me a great platform. Um, and just honestly, you know, being at school in general and the frat, just being at HBCU in general, um, it just surrounded me with people that wanted to see me win. So a lot of times you don't recognize, even just overall life, how much you need, especially Man, it's cool to get love from the ladies. You know, we're going to do that. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's different. You know what I'm saying? You come to a place with, you know, you know, excuse my language, you know, niggas be hating. Like, you come to yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. everybody trying, you know what I'm saying? Like, get one up. So it's different when you got a group of fellas, on um, whether from the frat and just in school in general, people that just wanted to see me win. So I appreciated it for real. For real. That's what it did for me. I feel you. Yeah, man. For me, man, um, 
I ain't gonna lie to you, man. When I yeah, when I was graduating high school, um, because for those who don't know, I, I played as a freshman, so I, I became um, Fred as a freshman, and that's a very hard thing to do. A lot of people they because they don't want to take that chance on a freshman. Yeah, they don't want yeah they don't want to take that chance on you, man, because they you know they don't know if you gonna be able to stay around, you know, because people transfer schools and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. it happens, you know, just for like majors and whatnot. But um, I wasn't even thinking about that shit, man. Honestly, I was just thinking about going running. Getting to school for free, trying to get education, whatever, whatever. Um, but then I like then I talked to Nigel, yo, and he's pretty much like, yo, man, you know, we got this thing, you know, I, I got this thing I'm doing, you know, um, you know, pretty much we just you know laying it down like sigma this, sigma that. And I was like, all right, cool, you know, whatever, you know, I'm gonna check it out when I get up there. So I checked it out. They had one, and I was just like, damn, and I was just like scrolling through IG and I see like I just saw like what it like what it was doing for him. I was just like, man, that should look quite hella cool. I'm not gonna lie to you. He probably getting a hell of bitches from that. I don't like I <laughs> damn, I was like at the time, I was just, you know, I was like, damn, I was I was, almost, <laughs> I was like, yo, I was, I was like, I'm trying to get down. Like, what yo, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But they shortly told me, uh, but you know, right before they was like, Yeah, you know, that's what I told y'all last time. Like, I was, was gonna like, yeah, ask you, I was gonna ask yeah, you about right. that too. They was like, if you don't get girls before this, you did, that shit ain't gonna change at the words. Like, that's what they told me, yo. So I was just like <laughs> He <laughs> was like, yo, all that stuff in, you still gonna look goofy, yo. Like, you look goofy before, you still gonna <laughs> look a, goofy. You, you came in here with no game, you leave it with, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good luck. But, but man, for me, as far as, like, what I took from it, like, I... I took a, I really did take that sense of brotherhood, you know what I'm saying? Cause I, if you know me, I don't, I grew up without any brothers at all, you know what I mean? And um, it definitely taught me a lot of things that I needed to learn about myself, you know? Uh, like mm -hmm. one thing that I learned, like I wouldn't, I, I truly feel like I would have never learned this shit anywhere else was self control, yo. I had that problem before with, you know, being a high head and quitting, you know, like I'm, I was a high head, but. After that, after you know, going through our process and everything, I just came out as just a more understanding person, be able to, you know, think about what I say and really articulate myself in a better way. So that's mm -hmm. what I took from it, you know. A real sense of brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. what the common thing is that I'm hearing is especially uh, like you just said as well, Javen, is that it's advertised as well. It's like, hey. Some ladies over here on this side, man. Come, come, come through. <laughs> but it's much deeper than that. Like you said, it's something that is very important for men, especially to get that real big sense of brotherhood, especially if you didn't have that growing up through family or you didn't yeah. have the biggest circle in school. But having a group of people, a group of men that actually want to see you succeed and are actually helping you. And not just helping yeah. you in like a uh, echo chamber kind of a way, but like they're actually iron sharpening iron. Like they're really teaching you valuable things from what I'm understanding. Like you said, Javen, the self-control yeah. thing. That's something that a lot of guys have problem with. That That's where yeah. you get those viral videos of them screaming at a girl after she dismissed them in public <laughs> right. and stuff like that. Bro. Yeah, uh, yeah. For a lot yeah. of guys, it's genuinely an issue controlling their emotions because they don't yeah. know. Like it's very hard to deal with that kind of a thing. Yeah. And I mean, that sounds a brother, man. A lot of, like you're saying, like a lot of people, they find that other places like gangs, you know what I'm saying? And like, mm -hmm. just for me personally, you know, I was just like, you know, this is this is definitely a much, much, much better alternative, you know what I'm saying, in my mind. Um, you know, you know, a little bit laughing because, you know what I'm saying, but, you know, real, yeah, real. It is it's it real. Is. Yeah, it's, it's real. At the end of the day, shit, though, like, I look at it like, bro, I don't... And that's what it, you know digital trapping is, is 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 so crazy because a lot of times the things that we have to do out of survival mode we don't even realize that those are million dollar skills when it mm -hmm. comes to right so you, know, you you trapping or you hustling right. with quote unquote is looked down on society but whole time you have excellent organization sales yeah. skills you at whole you moving like a ceo but you just yeah. Yeah. Nobody's mm -hmm. office, so it's really just <laughs> transitioning those same yeah. skills, but putting it in something that's just a little bit more safer. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's real shit too, man. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you because when it comes to that kind of a thing about your uh, business that you have been running for quite some time, when somebody wants to do something like that and they need to go ahead and get all this down on paper, you the resume plug we hearing. You know, right. we, we hear come to you if you want to uh -huh. get your resume right. 
So I wanted you to, I, I want to ask you to go a little bit more in depth about that and how running that goes for you and what you've been up to with that, how it started, yeah. all of it. Yeah, for sure, bro. So when it comes to the resume plug, it's really just about filling a gap um, and being a great resource for the community. When I was going mm -hmm. to college, bro, I didn't even have a suit uh, my freshman year. I had to grab my room, my roommate suit. I wasn't really prepared. And a lot of kids that look like us that come from where we come from aren't either as much as you think that you are. Mm -hmm. So the resume Respect. plug came from me knocking out my stuff, me getting myself into the door. And the mindset that I have is, look, I'm going to go ahead and blaze the path. I'm going to walk through the fire. And all you got to do is just follow the footsteps. The fire is already gone. It's going to take you right to the destination. And that's where resume plug really came from. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Sure, you, you ain't get that from a preface, yo? Yeah, it sounded I, like a preface of a book, yo. You, you I read a, a lot, man. I, it's, oh, it's, man. That was old up, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but nah, I, I feel that, man. That's that's really tough, though. Um, Yeah, man, because I look, I, I, I even see that um somebody that we know recently, I ain't going to shout his name out, Um, but somebody that we know recently that we went to Edgewood with, you know what I'm saying? They, yeah. um, just got a job using your resume plug service. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so that's that's really cool. And I I, I differentiate myself, bro, because it's like, I mean, it's a lot of people that do things out here. It's a lot of fish in the sea, but for me, I can target any demographic. You feel me? Like, right. I, you know, people when they last dollar, like really on the streets, like getting them from a zero to a set. I'd rather work with somebody who's at the bottom because it's much more fulfilled. I don't even like working with um, you know, top of the line clients because the impact ain't high. I'd rather work with yeah. somebody that got nothing that's trying to get on their feet because that small change is what's going to really propel them. So a lot of times people also get discouraged because they don't have somebody that can fill the bridge. They know that they're trying to fix up. They know that they're trying to get more legal. They know they're trying to get their corporate on, but it's nobody that can talk their language to be able to make it make sense for them. That's really interesting like how you set that up, though, you know, because I think not a lot of people, not a lot of people really have that in them to just like how you said, like, you know, of course you're, you're running a business, but, but from what I hear with your business, you know, you can, you're literally doing things that's benefiting people to help them get jobs, careers, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's different, you know, because, you know, anyone else can, can start up another business that can benefit others, but yours literally can, you know, can really have the potential to change you know what I'm saying, motherfuckers' lives and really set them up for for, for greatness and stuff like that. That's, that's, that's what's up, though. I appreciate yeah. it, man. We, yeah. we do, like, we do things all throughout the community. Like, my resumes is crazy. When I first started writing, my resumes mm -hmm. used to be $30 back at a and mm -hmm. Now they're sitting at anywhere from $300 to $1,000 packages. Woo! I got Woo. people in my Instagram, yo, I thought the resume was 50 bucks, bro. I checked the website. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Look, when you check the website uh, for today's price, not today's Jordan's price. 20 years You're right. Ago, now it's right. not going to be the same. We, we <laughs> old, older yeah. price oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell hey, that's Hell what yeah. being consistent will do for you right there. Yeah. That That's that consistency right there. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You know what? Here's what I do though, man. We we pull up to different schools. Um, we've done some stuff in Maryland. We've done some stuff in North Carolina. We do workshops for free. Uh, we teach schools for free. Um, and we do free resume consultations for free. We want to work with serious people. Um, but at the end of the day, we're not gonna let money be an excuse. If you ain't got the yeah. bread, I got YouTube videos. Okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna see how much you really want it. At that point, most people quit is they have no type of effort. And I don't even want to work with you. Right. You gotta show me something. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll tell you. That's something I think a lot of people yeah. stay forgetting is that we have a literal just supercomputer in our pocket, man. Right. Like that if you just time. just uh do you got two of them? <laughs> <laughs> like three of them. Oh god, <laughs> man, is, that, is that future <laughs> Hendrix? <laughs> is that future Hendrix, yeah? Oh, so yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, digital trapper <laughs> for real. Digital <laughs> trapper for real. <laughs> <laughs> Digital trapper for real. Hey, hey, yo, feel me? Look, that's how you gotta get it, man. It's a that's super computer in your pocket, man. If and I think yeah. it really does stem from, and it's really, it's really weird to say, honestly. I don't think a lot of people notice it. Like your, bro, check your ego just a little bit and look it up. Learn, right. learn from somebody who's doing what you're trying to do. You know, you don't people gotta do. try and figure effort. it out by yourself. You don't gotta try and just. You don't have right. to keep bumping your head, man. <laughs> It's 2022. Yeah. 
You you can just look it up and you can like you just said you can look at the footprints right there. Man. They're right there. Mm-hmm. Just go. You just gotta look yeah. for them. You just gotta yeah. look for them. Yeah, man. There's really it really is no excuse to be asking anybody like, man, I don't know how to do this. Like, oh yes, you do. You just gotta go and watch. Google that. (laughs) Google that right there. Yo, that's my father. Yo, my dad said that shit to me all the time. Yo, I'd be like, Dad, Joe, like, how you do this? And like with the cars, and he'd be like, Google that shit, nigga. I'd be like, all right, fuck. My bad, Joe. Like, like, yo. It's funny (laughs) because that whole thing about, like I said, the supercomputer thing, I learned that from my father as well. I remember like something would go wrong with maybe like the router or no, not mm-hmm. necessarily the router, like the TV, let's just say would go out for some reason. And he would uh, get on the computer and it, he wouldn't do no catchphrases. He wouldn't do no, you know, tra- trigger words. None of that. It was literally how to fix X, Y, Z television <laughs> year 2011. <laughs> <laughs> the screen is staticky. Like oh, it's, it's so exactly old, like right? that. And go through actual pages and just be like, okay, nope, nope, okay, nope, nope. And then, like, Man. an hour later, he'd have fixed the TV. You would <laughs> so get mad, too, that you consistency. Know? Look, you would get Seriously. mad, too, if you grew up in an era where you actually had to figure it out. And then somebody come asking you how you do this when you got whole computers on your phone that could get you the answer in 30 <laughs> yeah. seconds. That's true. But true. one thing that I did want to ask, man, because you were talking about just, like, enjoying working with people who are at like ground zero how tough can that be not only on that person but just for you as well too just to be able to provide that service and you know because you you have a brand you have a standard that you want to you know live up to how tough is that for you to be able to like not give up on one of those people that's just like completely like yeah they ain't with it you know what i'm saying like or not even that they ain't with it but damn like okay nigga like you really at ground zero like you know what i'm saying like it's this is it so how hard is that uh, it can be difficult, man. You know, they say that sometimes the healer can go before the sick. You know, you, I have to be careful Shit. sometimes in terms it's of the... <laughs> it's deep right there. Shit, yeah. <laughs> uh, to consistently fill my cup. Um, I have to hit the gym. I have to be conscious of the energy, the things that I do, bro, because I'm working with a lot of, you know, broken, damaged spirits, um, people that are going through, uh-huh. like, it's not just resumes. It's not just... You know, tapping buttons on a phone like it's people's lives at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The, the yeah. Conversation could be the difference between them and their families eating today versus not eating tomorrow. Um, so I have to make sure I bring my whole self to the table. And at the end of the day, I'm passionate. I have to be beware of when I'm tapped out and drained. I'm um, gonna know when I'm energized and, and keep going. So we definitely don't give up on anybody, uh, but you have to meet us halfway. And that's how we move. I like that. Give them, you got to be worth the while because, yeah, like you said, sometimes they just they they don't they don't seem to really want it as bad as they say they do, and, and at least not yet. Mm-hmm. At least not yet, because like you just said, when the family isn't eating tomorrow, they're going to think about the yesterday. When that when yeah. that kind of a thing happens, that sometimes there needs to be a couple yesterdays. So the resilience, and I keep saying it again, consistency, man, that's mm-hmm. so key when it comes to yeah. success. That I'm understanding consistency. That's such a big that. aspect. Just like, just like I can appreciate, like how you say, you know, even on those nights when you, you know, you feel like you burnt out, you still, you know, what I'm saying, put in that effort because you don't know their situation. You know, they, they literally dependent of you. You know, and I think, I mean, I'm not saying from, like, I know exactly, you know, when it comes down to your customers and everything like that, but like just nine times out of ten, you know, just like how we explained earlier, you know, people will try their best to do it on a on their own without asking for help. So, you know, with them, they could have did a resume they self and applied to this job or career yeah. four or five times, you know? So at, with them contacting you, this is like their last resort. Like, cause you know, obviously at this point they know, you know, it's, it's not working, you know, by myself, I need some help, you know? And just the fact that you still show that compassion, you know, like you say, even when you're tired and shit like that, like that's, that's really appreciative, you know? It is. Man, it's real, man. We've had some real moments. We've pulled a couple all nighters to get some shit done. Um, really been able to put a lot of people in position. It's fulfilling for me at the end of the day. Uh, right. so, you know, it's a God given gift. So I'm utilizing it day in and day out. Um, and it's great, you know, because most of the people who I work with, they're my friends. Most of the people that work that I work with are people in my communities, people that look mm-hmm. like me. So 
Yeah. But at the end of the day, and I'm a great multitasker. Like if my homie's really, really struggling, I don't even, I wouldn't even charge him. I'm like, bro, let's get on FaceTime. I, you know, talk to me about what's going on. I'm gonna whip out, knock out this resume. 40 minutes later, it's done. We didn't caught up and you on your way. Like that's just how I be operating. Um, right. I can do it sometimes more than others. But like you said, man, it's all about pushing forward, making sure I'm good. As long as I'm straight, y'all going to get the best of me. Mm -hmm. Love it, man. Everything Between else that, around you. For real. Yeah. You're a man of the community, y'all. Definitely need more um, small people in the community like that, especially young black men. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, in the city as well, too. Um, you know, so definitely, definitely love to see that, man. Really do. Um, definitely, man. Just wanted to move on to the digital trappers joint, man. Like, I know as far as so you gave the whole definition of pretty much like what it's about, you know, how it moved, but know that there's definitely some it's an umbrella when it comes to digital traps. I know there's some stuff mm -hmm. that's like you know that you do within that, um, a lot more so with uh, like I know like day trading and stuff like that. So, we're gonna talk about that and like how that goes into digital trapping and like different type of avenues that you can get into if you want to be able to call yourself a digital trapper. Yeah, man. A digital trapper is really just a hustler, you know, somebody that that understands and gets it um, in terms of the, the struggle, um, understands the oppression, the challenges and obstacles that we have and took matters into their own hands and is taking advantage of the, uh, the opportunities that we have today via social media, via the phone. So with me specifically, mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of trading, um, you know, investing, um, but I'm teaching as well. So I make money from doing it myself. I also make money from hosting classes. I do in-person events. Uh, but really, like you said, Digital Trappers is an umbrella. Uh, is an umbrella. We've hosted a lot of different businesses. And definitely got a shout out my guy, Fortune. Um, he's really the one who pioneered the whole thing. You know, that's a legend right there. Yes, sir. Yeah, in terms of the name, um, he started Baltimore Booming with the mixtapes. And from there, you know, Digital Trappers went worldwide. We actually had uh, Michael K. Williams, a.k.a. Omar, uh, from the yeah. wire, rest in peace, man. Rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. He rest pulled up peace. on us, you know, right before he passed, um, to talk about digital trapping down at the crib in Miami. So, um, it's definitely huge. But at the end of the day, it's whatever you make it. We've done everything from social media, businesses, websites. But for me personally, it's primarily around trading, teaching, and just overall just making bread from the phone. I'm in the in the DR last week, and I'm still cashing out on the seven. That's what it's about. Ooh. taking on the taking on the new age head, head yeah. first jumping right on into it jumping see right island it. boy you know what I'm <laughs> I, was, I was in jamaica too literally i'm sharing yeah, man. the files i'm look yeah i'm so happy when you sent me those yeah i just got my passport literally less than 18 months ago we didn't filled it up so I, I i'm new to this clearly hey, man. just yeah. getting started yeah. just, hey, getting, just started. getting started just yo getting hey started. Hey man, you run it up, yo. You run that motherfucking passport up, yo. Yeah. And definitely appreciate those pictures again, man. That should brought definitely brought me back home, yo. Just yeah, love like, it, man. Get all my Jamaican niggas. I'm like, what the fuck? I know Jamaican. <laughs> 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 Just I had to send him a picture of the beat. Hey, hey like, I'm where I'm at. Right, yo. Okay, <laughs> they hit me like, they hit me like, wah, guad. I was like, oh, this nigga out in Jamaica. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, that's what's up, though, yo. I love it, man. I love it. Um, definitely, yeah. Shout out to Fortune, man. Like I said, another Edgewood Baltimore legend. Um, love to see. Just love to see, you know what I'm saying? Like, the homies just doing, you know, good shit, yo. And that's just that's what's up. I know Miami is a vibe, too, man. So, um, but that's what's up, mm -hmm. man. And um, <laughs> as far as just, like, there's a couple, I know you, you've been doing a couple of interesting things, man. So, I just I wanted to pull up on you about them, man. You know what I'm saying? So, I know for a little bit of time, I don't know if you still do, um, but you used to work for Facebook, yo. Yeah. What was that like? Yo, what was that like? What was it like working for Zuckerberg? That Zuckerberg. evil ass nigga, yo. Was, well, right. I, actually, I actually met Zuck. Um, he came to ANT back in the day. Um, so we got a chance to pull up on him. Little did I know I'd be working up there. So it was my first oh, wow. job uh, out of college. Like I say, real, you know, I'm the resume plus. So I'm gonna make sure I get myself lit first. Of oh, I feel right. that. Oh, of course, right. oh, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we put that together. <laughs> Um, and it was amazing, man. It's only it's the equivalent to going to Harvard, I'm gonna be honest. And mm -hmm. I felt yeah. like a fish out of water. I had a little bit of an imposter syndrome. Um, but after a while, man, you know, I, I know what I bring to the table. So yeah. it was smooth. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was a real surreal moment, like because going to college is one thing, going to AT is one thing, but it's like 
you know, a lot of people may go to school or we familiar with HBCUs, but you know, right. just to be candid with y'all, like I don't, you know, before now, I don't know nobody that's working at Instagram that I could call. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. 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 So, I became the plug on Instagram, like man. So it was a great opportunity, and it's something that I use as a business person when I'm telling people to pay for this resume package. It's shit that I actually know how to do myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel you. That's Damn, something a man. lot of people gotta keep remembering, man. Is life goes in phases, man. Life goes in yeah. phases, and each mm -hmm. of these things, like like you just said, it goes right on your resume. This stuff boosts you up even higher and higher. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying, club, man. We dripping. Stick in that. You know what I'm saying uh, opportunity is gonna come. <laughs> screaming. Going after. I, I, I want to ask you something, actually, as a matter of fact, about uh, like you said, since that's what you're doing, well, about networking, really. So what do you say, like, especially like how you spoke about growing up and I grew up same way and not so much the same way anymore, but I still have my introverted tendencies, my antisocial behaviors. And so what do you say to somebody who's going through shyness or just frankly isn't interested or anything like that as far as that goes? Well, first thing, it's all about that. What makes you happy? You know, mm -hmm. if you're con content in life, you don't got no complaints, then we don't have no advice for you. You're good. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. if you're somebody that wants more, you feel like you know you want more opportunities, then obviously we're gonna have to do a little bit more. Like I said, you can get forced and put into situations. Um, but I encourage you to take advantage. What I did was I took advantage of all the things our society looks down upon. Most people mm -hmm. our age, you know, under the age of 25, under the age of 30, under the age, just young person in general, honestly, most people are afraid to talk. Most people are afraid to get on the phone. Most people are afraid of in-person interactions. And when I mm -hmm. realized that, I'm like, yo, everybody's fucking afraid. Yeah. So, so who cares at the end of the yeah. day? Like, when yeah. you, you start thinking yeah. about that, like, mm -hmm. you don't even hesitate. Like, everybody's scared. So when you come off yeah. nationally confident, you're going to look like you really know what you're talking about, even though you may be just as scared. So I say this. A phone call is worth three years in somebody's uh, primitive memory. So check this out. Me and Javen was on the phone two years ago and my name pops up he's gonna say positive things even yo that's my man that's uh, my boy yeah. that's true yeah. that's a fact years ago. it's a fact right a text message will last about six months yeah you know right and social media will last about three to six months so i realized that most people are staying in the three to six months i'm going for longevity i'm going for years i'm gonna pick up the phone i'm gonna wish right. boss a happy birthday i'm gonna you know check on check in on him because my name pops up two years from now and we chatted two years ago about his birthday and what he had going on and mm -hmm. i'm i'm bro I'm, he's he's giving me the referral he's passing the blessing for the business so you gotta uh, understand how to stay top of mind and you always got to remember when you walk into a room you gotta ask yourself this one question why should they remember me uh, that's how you move why should they remember me why mm -hmm. should they remember me and don't let it be because you was the only nigga in there. <laughs> let it be because you was the only nigga in there getting your shit done, though. Right. That's what it needs to be. Yeah, man. Man, listen, man. I wanted to say this, though. Um, definitely was jealous about Facebook, man. I ain't going to lie to you. Because I, I remember when I was working at Yelp in D.C., um, Facebook was right above us. Okay. Right above us, man. And I remember used to getting off the elevator because, you know, they was at the top spot, like the, the, the penthouse joint. I remember getting off the elevator before all them <laughs> niggas. And, you know, it was just like, from one time, I was I just I was just curious. I was like, what the fuck does it look like up there? Yeah, I went up there, yo, and I couldn't even see. It was blinding. It was almost like the, like the gates of heaven opened up. <laughs> and before I knew it, <laughs> before I knew it, I had a hand on my, oh, oh, oh. That's exactly what happened to me. You know what I'm saying? I fell. I had a hand on my chest. And it was like, nah, you don't, you don't, you're not supposed to be up here, young man. Your badge don't work. Yeah, and it was like, it was like, you don't have clearance, sir. We can tell. Yeah, right. Yeah, they was like, no, no, you work for Yelp. Go back downstairs and do some ads. I was like, oh, damn it. God damn. damn. But yeah, man, that's tough, man. And um, that's, yeah, that's, I definitely remember that everybody out there, man. Um, you know, all the young women, young men out there, why should they remember me? You know what I'm saying? That's an important that's what any interaction that you ever make. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you're looking, you're trying to get a girl, you know what I'm saying? Why should she remember me? If you're trying to get a guy, why should he remember me? You know what I'm saying? Job, whatever. Just 
especially at the job. That's that's what's yeah, gonna put yeah. the money in your pocket, leave an impression. Exactly. Right after they see yeah. the resume, you follow that up with a good interview. But, hey, they'll definitely remember you. Right. Uh-huh. That's a fact, hey, man. I speaking of remembering, there's a photo I remember that oddly but I remember from years back of you with Magic Johnson. <laughs> how did yeah. that how did that happen? How did that end up? What happened man. with that? Well, I ain't gonna lie, man. I got, <laughs> I got stories for days. I know I, I've worked at the red carpet, Tyler Perry, BET, Magic Johnson, Los Angeles yeah. Speakers. Um, all from that same question I just asked you guys. Why should you all remember me? That's how I walk into every room. Um, and you know it's coming from God when it just line up. You meet mm -hmm. yeah. lady over here, lady over here, no lady over there. They no lady over here. And now I'm on my way to L.A. And, you know, with Magic Johnson and the Lakers. Literally just that simple. And nothing is crazy. You know, I ain't win the lottery. Um, I just walk into rooms. I look for opportunities. I speak to everybody. I form meaningful relationships. And when my name pops up, you know, most of the time, you know, I have just like the resume. It's fighting for me before I can even get to the interview. That's how you want your name and your reputation to be fighting for you before they can even meet you or hear from you. Man, I, I gotta know. I gotta know. And for those who don't know out there, my man Nigel, you know what I'm saying? He's a baller first, you know what I'm saying? He, he said he played tennis, but that was a very under is an understatement as far as his athletic abilities. My man is a baller, you know what I'm saying? He know. Mm -hmm. So I gotta know. What's up? Did you challenge Magic Johnson to a one-on-one -on -one game? <laughs> I gotta know. Hell no. We was Hell no. Now check it though. I seen Lonzo, Ingram, all of them. This was like 2017. Since when Lonzo first came into the league, he was mm -hmm. at practice. Yeah. Um, so it was good vibes, but Magic really was schooling me on the business tip. He walked, mm -hmm. he let me kick it with him the whole weekend. I'm really observing what he does from a day to day, just moving like That's a tough. Exec. Um, so for me, I was like 20 years old at the time, just taking it all in. That was my first yeah. time in LA. I'm with the Lakers. Shit, it was a movie. First time in LA. And that, yeah, that's how yeah. you, like you said, that's how you let the that's resume that's speak you, for you. Right? Yeah. That's how you, yeah. you, first time landing in the stage, you getting picked up by, <laughs> by Mr. Magic. Lake. <laughs> right, Come Magic. On, man, Showtime Hello, himself, Chow, man. All off networking, just stuff like this, spreading mm -hmm. good energy, keeping my name alive, and then she let God take care of the rest. It's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful thing, man. And honestly, man, I just want to give. I just want to keep on the road with the networking, man. So I know recently, man, and I really do want to know how you got to how you got into this, man. You was on tour with Ti and Tiny's daughter. What hey, the dude. fuck? What was that about? <laughs> so, Tiny, what was she bro, doing? Like, man, let me, <laughs> this, let me say this, bro. The hardest thing about like getting on is like getting that first start, getting that first break. Mm -hmm. But once you put in the work, once you put in the years for your personal brand, what ends up happening is originally you fight for every opportunity. Eventually, opportunities will get you more opportunities. Yeah. So I'm yeah, speaking right. at an event. It's about 100, 200 people there. I'm doing my thing. I get connected. And we like, yo, I gave, you know, talked about an idea. And she mentioned that she was connected, you know, to the to the hustle family. And I'm like, you lying? She's like, all right, bet. Carter, I'm on the phone with Tiny. We lock in. She's like, when can you pull up? You know me. I'm like, yesterday, I pull up. <laughs> and, 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 you know, one thing leads to another. We was on tour with Escape, um, Candy, Tiny Escape, the old school. We did uh, yep. 112. We did Genuine. Um, really just mm. being on tour with them, just capturing that content, working on right. some, you know, digital pieces moving forward because it's a digital world. Everybody's trying to get their digital trap on, not yeah. just the average person, even celebrities right. too. So they trying to tap yeah. in. Yeah, it was lit. That's yeah, how you man. know it's getting real when the mainstream mm -hmm. starts really dabbling in this. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. people talk about NFTs on exactly. major network television. Like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. it's really real. Down there for I think real. Snoop got like three of them. Oh. Yeah, oh, the NFT digital tip. So, man, oh, okay. I, I, I've been blessed, man. I've been able to to shake a lot of hands and meet a lot of people that you know. When you guys originally asked me what was the shift, I will never forget. You know, just thinking about where I wanted my life to go, and I didn't know all of those things could happen. But mm -hmm. one thing leads to another, and I'm glad that I took on a challenge and and really just decided to be better instead of giving in to certain things. Yeah, man. And just like and... just like how we uh, how you want. Now go ahead. Just just like how we how we speaking on like the networking aspect. We you know we understand, like you say, your your business has been going on for you know five, five plus years and everything like that. What what was it like? I mean, I don't know if, if things changed or 
or anything you had to do in a different way when it came down to the to the pandemic and when it hit like uh, as far as like how to you know especially when the lockdowns came about you know how did how did those interactions go with networking and stuff like that i was harder you know i thrived off of i, I worked as a, a red carpet press escort you know for bet um, mm -hmm. so it's sad to kind of see those things go away um, but my resume business thrives. It's a need-based business. I'm not right. selling t-shirts, uh, um, you know, kicks. You know, at the end of the day, I'm putting food on the table. Um, right. So the pandemic, if anything, uh, invigorated my business and turned it up, showcasing that people even need, you know, tighten up their resume. Yeah, yeah. Um, true, true. <laughs> you know sure. A lot of people, a lot of people true. losing the, the jobs and careers they had too. So yeah, it turned yeah. it up. But I mean, I still like, you know, virtual. We, we did North Texas. Um, we did uh a and t we did a lot of different schools virtual we went and talked to mm -hmm. so the impact still was made the lives were still impacted we still got busy for sure just found a different way to do it that's what's up mm -hmm. yep it's all about that trapping man you know what i'm saying right, also don't, don't stop. stop don't stop rain sleet snow you know what i'm saying you mm -hmm. got to get any way possible y'all definitely respect that man and um i was gonna say man i know like a lot of it you know is uh really not blocking blessings you know because when you get into a lot of these things and you start like realizing things that you can do or opportunities start coming your way, it can be very overwhelming and scary sometimes, you know? And mm -hmm. sometimes we tend to block those blessings because it's out of our comfortability. It's out right. of our, you know, it's out of our, what we feel could really be our reach, you know, because we never imagined, like you just said, like you never could imagine your life taking this type of turn. And when you get there, it's like, oh shit, do I want to keep going on this path? Or, you know, do I stop right here because I don't want to lose it all. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So talk about life being a gamble and, and how, you know, you're able to confront, you know, those inner thoughts telling you, man, I'm too scared to do this. Yeah, everybody's different. You know, some people move uh, either more out of fear um, or people move out of greed. And I'm definitely more on the greed side. Like, I'm a risk taker. Like, and mm -hmm. th that's my biggest strength and it can be my biggest weakness. Like, for mm -hmm. example, if Magic mm -hmm. Johnson, that played off to serve me well. Like if I didn't take certain risk, if I didn't step into certain rooms I wasn't supposed to, knock on doors I wasn't supposed to, I wouldn't have been in LA with the Lakers. But at right. the same time, I've had instances in my life where that same strength proved to be a weakness, where sometimes I should have chilled, sometimes I should have stopped when I was ahead. So you kind of have to mm -hmm. just know who you are as a person, know when to turn it on and off. If you're somebody that operates a little bit more on the scary side, that can be a strength because, hey, maybe you know how to stop. Maybe you know how to, you know, not put yourself in debt or not put yourself in danger. And so you kind of right. have to go the strengths that you bring, maximize them, but be mindful of how it can be detrimental to you as well. It's true. Perfect, man. Mm -hmm. Perfect way to put that, man. Mm -hmm. Perfect way to put that, honestly. And how do you... <clears throat> What do you, I, I know you spoke about working out before, but what other things entirely, or is it really just all the drive behind what you're trying to do that keeps you out of temptation simply just of getting off focus, off path, knocking yourself off kilt? Because I'm sure when you're, like you said, you were in L.A. with the Lakers, there's a whole bunch of different, there's a whole lot of action going on, living in Miami, <laughs> stepping yeah, outside man. of the states. How do you yeah, stay bro, focused? I got an interesting combination, man. I can't be too comfortable, like, you know, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's family and very close people and shit, even myself at times going through real things. So I ain't right. everything ain't peaches and cream as we see on social media. So um, I'm still very much on a day to day basis uh, facing my own challenges. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we talked about environment, you know, I, and also it's just me. I'm not really flashy and fancy as a person. Like I literally could just mm -hmm. get a bed. Um, a slight kitchen and, and and 300 square foot and I'll be happy. That doesn't really determine my happiness. So right. you know, once I got more bread and once I was in a position to do some of those bigger things, I still stayed the original person and you could literally take them all away, which some things did go away and you still get money. Your name still holds weight regardless right. of the material mm -hmm. things you have attached to you. Got you. It's important, important balance between material and sentimental. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What what drives you or motivates you versus, you know, oh, what can I reap or benefit just from doing this and things like that? Because it's a very, you know, very big difference, you know. One could lead you to becoming the greatest of all time of what you do, and the other one could lead you to a mass destruction if you let it get there, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, you know, money is the root of all evil, that's what they say, you know what I'm saying? It could 
give you all the tools that you need to destroy yourself or it can give you all the tools that you need to build you and others around you you know so it's definitely important to recognize um like strengths and weaknesses and things like that and just understanding yourself so that way you can get to that point of being mellow you know what i'm saying and right. at a balance on your on your scale you gotta set yourself up for success you gotta yeah. set yourself up for that make sure that way you're ready for it Again, I've said this quote before on other episodes, but I'll say it here because it really applies. So one of the worst things to happen to some of you people is you got rich. And it's just because you weren't really ready for that situation. You can really, you know, things can go away. <laughs> and you want to make sure that you're a solid and sound person before that even steps into the equation. That way you know how to handle that. One of the yeah. most dangerous things about people who are successful isn't the isn't even their resources. It's the fact that if they lost all their resources, they actually know how to get it back, and if not, even more. Yeah, yeah. it's facts, man. And man, Nigel, man, the last thing, y'all. Just any advice that you know that you got for young men, young men, women, or anybody of you know any age, just that's looking to get into more so really just their own. You know, starting to you know be who they are and being an entrepreneur, any advice that you have for any one of those people, any anybody like that? Yeah, my biggest advice, advice is two things. Um, number one, that you are responsible for your own success um, and you have your own life. You know, I'm speaking to people specifically who may be burdened by friends, family, environment, situation. Uh, please don't feel guilty uh, for making the move for yourself, especially at your adult age. You got to do it or you're going to yeah. grow up be 50 and mad at somebody for quote unquote holding you back. Uh, and right. second thing, um, I say move, right? If you have the opportunity to move, whether that's change jobs, change locations, do it. You can always come back. Like, I don't care. You can always come back. You can always go mm -hmm. to where you started from um, if you don't like it. So go ahead and make that leap and y'all know what that means for y'all. Yep. I love yes, it, man. Sir. Thank you, Nigel. Uh, definitely. Plug, go ahead. Go ahead. Plug yourself. Yeah, plug, yourself. Your yeah, businesses, plug everything, your man. Social, social. Media, Go ahead. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure, man. You can definitely tap in with me on Instagram at Nigel's Canvas. Um, ResumePlug1.com. Look us up. Tap in with us. Like I said, we got free consultations. Um, we round the clock 24-7 getting it in. We got automated services. If you want to learn how to trade, you can hit me up on Instagram. Again, that's Nigel's Canvas. Um, N-I-G-E-L-S. Canvas as an art painting. Um, and the resume plug, man, we dripping with opportunities, and the canvas is never blank. It's filled up with opportunities, blessings, and a big bag of money, man. Let's digital trap. Love it, man. Yeah. Thank Great you for coming through, energy. big bro. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thank man. you. Thank you. Love, love, love. And Inside Wolves, we are out. For more Inside Wolf content, make sure to subscribe and make sure to hit that link tree in our bio to bring you to all our platforms. Let's get it.